In this video, I'm going to be going over some very basic guidelines that everybody should be aware of when it comes to uh, doing some sort of diet in order to uh, maintain or lose weight. Exercise tips for weight control first, because um, I'm an exercise physiologist, this is what I know best. Uh, gradually increase your physical activity over time. Um, if you try to do too much all at once, you're probably going to get injured. So a gradual increase is better. It's also something that you're more likely to maintain for the rest of your life, which is really what you need to do uh, with any of these recommendations in order to have lasting change. Uh, so lasting weight loss. Um, reduce your sedentary time. Um, so it's not just about how much you're exercising, it's about how much time do you spend being sedentary. So just sitting, doing nothing. So sitting at a computer, sitting, watching TV, those are all sedentary behaviors you wanna to try to minimize and be more active throughout the day. Um, to maintain weight and to prevent weight gain, uh, the general recommendations that you typically see out there are going to be to exercise at a moderate intensity, um, doing cardiorespiratory or aerobic exercise for equal to or greater than 150 minutes per week. If you're trying to lose weight, so if you're not quite at the weight you want to be and you need to lose weight still, um, equal to or greater than 300 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic or cardiospiratory exercise is the recommendation most commonly uh, shown out there. All right, so uh, you will see a lot of people talking about resistance exercise for weight loss. It's become very, very popular to uh, recommend doing all those resistance exercise for weight loss. And does it have some benefits? Sure. Um, but it doesn't have the benefits that respiratory or aerobic exercise has. All right, so let's talk about this. Resistance exercise is going to burn far fewer calories than aerobic exercise is going to do, which is the primary reason you're trying to do the exercise if you're trying to lose weight. All right, so it's going to burn uh, less during exercise. Um, it does uh, have some benefit if you increase your muscle mass uh, of increasing your resting metabolic rate, which is what people always say whenever they say you should be doing all this resistance exercise to lose weight. But the additional weight loss that you might expect from having that high, slightly higher metabolic rates is pretty minimal. And also the amount of muscle mass you're likely to actually gain through resistance exercise for the average person is pretty minimal. Um, you, you'll gain some, but not enough to radically change um, how much, uh, how many calories you need in order to, you know, maintain uh, your weight, which is what you want to raise if you're trying to lose weight. Because if you raise how many calories you need to bring in, that means it's easier to have a calorie deficit, which causes weight loss. So I've been kind of bashing resistance exercise here in ter terms of weight loss, but that doesn't mean resistance exercise is bad. You should be doing resistance exercise. It just isn't what you should be doing if your goal is weight loss. You should be doing it, but doing it for other reasons. It's good for maintaining bone health. It's good for maintaining muscle health. And it's also uh, has some you know actual benefits for cardiovascular health as well. Just not so great with weight loss, like a lot of people like to say it is. On to some basic tips for diet in order to control your weight. Um, so it's might not be super popular to say this, um, but it is true. The most important thing if you're trying to maintain or lose your weight is going to be to uh, track your calories in versus calories out. So the calories you consume versus the calories you burn. So if you eat more calories than you burn, you're going to gain weight. If you eat fewer calories than you burn, you're going to decrease your weight. If you eat the same amount of calories, whether that's a little amount of calories or a lot of calories, you're gonna end up maintaining your weight. So weight maintenance is always going to be the same amount of calories in versus out. All right, so what are some basic then advice basically for um, watching the calories you consume? So uh, watch how many calories you consume through beverages. Most beverages are not going to have a lot of micronutrients in them. So they're basically wasted calories and it's very easy to consume a lot of liquid-based calories. Um, so it's probably something you wanna to try to avoid. Just drink water. It's calorie free. Um, gradually decrease the calorie intake that you do bring in. Um, if you immediately plummet your calories, it's gonna be very hard to stick to that. Focus on long-term behavioral change, not short-term weight loss. This is hard for a lot of people. Um, everybody wants to lose weight quickly. Well, people who wanna lose weight typically wanna lose it quickly. 
Um, but the focus should not be on the immediate term. The focus should be on the long-term objective of having sustained weight loss that stays off. And the only way to do that is through changing your lifestyle and your behavior. If you switch your behavior um, radically and you lose a lot of weight and you sort of slowly creep back to doing you know, the normal things you do, regardless of what that is, your weight's going to slowly creep back to what it was when you were doing those things that you normally do. So a goal is not quick weight loss. The goal is sustainable behavioral change, which is changing the way you behave both with your exercise and your eating habits so that whatever you reach that as your plateau is something you can keep doing. You can keep eating that way, you keep exercising that way, and hopefully then you'll be satisfied at that level of weight and that'll be something that um, you, you maintain for the rest of your life. All right, so with that being said, adherence to a diet is more important than the type of diet you are on assuming that you're uh, you're going to be doing a, some form of a healthy diet. There are a lot of very unhealthy diets out there. So pick a healthy diet and just stick to it. That's the goal here. It, again, behavioral change, lifestyle change is the goal, not so much short, quick weight loss. Short, quick weight loss is short, quick weight gain once you stop doing whatever you were doing. Um, so if you cannot see yourself doing the diet or the exercise habits for the rest of your life, it won't work for the rest of your life. It'll, whatever you go back to, that's what your weight will go back to. So uh, again, behavioral change, lifestyle change, not quick you know, dietary and exercise changes. Talking about all this with diet, we also need to talk about how you can then evaluate your diets. Um, the two most common ways of doing this are the 24 hour recall method, where basically whatever day you decide to start, you look back one day and you um, try to write down everything you had that day. Um, and sometimes th this can be done through various sort of survey based questions, and it can give you some estimate of what you're eating. The other very common way of doing it, and probably the slightly better way of doing it, is to do it through diet records or food records. And most commonly, this is done with a three-day food record. So here's our starting point when you decide to evaluate your diet for the next three days. What do you eat? And you just write everything down. The good thing is nowadays there are lots of apps out there that you can get on your you know, smartphone or different devices that you can record things very easily. And it will also spit out your you know, how many calories are in it, all the macro and micronutrients that you're consuming. It gives you lots of really great information. That used to be very difficult and expensive to do. It's not anymore. So this is, you know, it's much easier to do these these diet records than it used to be. And with how easy it is, some people actually do it continuously, um, and they just keep track of what they eat, you know, on a regular basis rather than just doing it for three days and stopping. Or you can do it every now and then, just kind of give yourself a check. Because it's so popular at this point in time, I don't want to finish this video without talking a little bit about high protein, low carbohydrate diets. Um, generally speaking, you know, you'll see here in a second that it's not something that I think is such a great idea. Um, it doesn't mean that lowering carbohydrates isn't good for some people who excessively consume carbohydrates, especially um, uh, poor sources of carbohydrates. It just means that you don't want to be low on carbs and high on protein. All right, so um, why, why, what are some reasons why I don't think these are necessarily the best uh, diets for you? All right, so you do get quick weight loss with high protein, low carb diets uh, for various reasons. But one of the reasons is because you burn through your glycogen stores, which is your stored glucose within your muscles and your liver. And glycogen is stored with a lot of water. So if you burn through the glycogen stores and you deplete it, you're also releasing the water, which your body will you know, expel out through urine or through breathing or through sweat, and you end up lighter. So you end up lighter though, because you have less water in your body, not necessarily because you have less fat in your body. So that's a lot of the initial weight loss of these high protein, low carb diets is actually water loss. So it's not fat loss, which is the goal with people who are doing sort of um, weight reduction diets. And so uh, just to kind of prove my point here, one gram of, of glycogen stored is stored with 2.7 grams of water. 
So there's more water being lost than carbohydrates being lost when you, you know, deplete your carbohydrate stores. And most of these high protein, low carbohydrate diets eventually reintroduce carbohydrates at least partially back in. And when it does this, you're going to at least partially build back up your glycogen stores, which means you're going to be gaining that water weight back. So it's not, even though it's you know, it's not the weight you want to lose anyways. It's also weight that you're not going to keep off once you go back to a, a more standard diet with more carbohydrates in it. So it's it's kind of, for this reason, it's, it's not so great. Um, but this, you know, the, you can lose fat weight on a high-protein, low-carb diet, and you will eventually if you maintain most of those diets. But this is one reason why some of the, the weight that you lose is, it's, it's a mirage. It's not really fat being lost, some of it. All right, so another reason why um, high protein, low carbohydrate diets are they're not so great, specifically the low carb part of that, is that um, your brain and spinal cord want to use carbohydrates as its fuel source. Normally, it is the only fuel source it will use. Um, when it's forced to, your body can go into ketogenesis and you can go through gluconeogenesis in order to um, get alternative um, keto bodies in order to fuel your brain and spinal cord. Um, but it is not your brain and spinal cord or your central nervous system's primary or preferred, I should say, it's not its preferred energy source. And so initially when you start one of these uh, low carb diets, you're probably going to feel pretty crummy. You're going to be very irritable. You're going to feel sluggish. You're going to have sort of a brain fog and fatigue feeling. And that's because your brain is basically, you know, starving for uh, a couple of days until the ketogenesis and the gluconeogenesis boosts up in order to provide it with other sources of fuel. Some health-based reasons why you should be a little concerned with these sort of low-carb diets and high-protein diets. Um, low-carb diets are associated typically with low dietary fiber diets as well uh, because dietary fiber is basically carbohydrates that our bodies can't break down. Um, and so low fiber diets are associated with digestive issues and um, you know, long-term potentially uh, some colorectal health issues. And so you don't want to be on a low fiber diet. The high protein side of this usually means a lot more animal uh, protein than what people would otherwise bring in. And so that usually means a higher fat content and a lot of cholesterol. And this uh, this is saturated fat and cholesterol that's going to lead to potentially blood lipid issues, so high blood cholesterol levels. So it's something that's not good for the avoidance of cardiovascular disease long term. The last major reason I'm going to list here of why the high protein, low carb diets might not be such a great idea is it typically is going to impair your exercise performance. So if you're an athlete or if you're just somebody who exercises a lot in order to maintain your health. Uh, it's it's something that's going to make the exercise harder. All right, so if we look at this diagram here, we have how much muscle glycogen you have. So again, muscle glycogen is the storage form of glucose within our muscles, um, and that's something that's going to be depleted by a low carbohydrate diet. And then on the the y-axis here, we have time to exhaustion doing some type of like endurance based sport. Uh, or during endurance based events. So cycling to exhaustion, running to exhaustion, something like that. If you look here, uh, again, the muscle glycogen is the lowest on a low carb diet, then on a normal carb, carb diet. Then if you have a high carb diet, so something you might do for a short period of time leaving, leading up to like a, a you know endurance based event where you want to have a lot of glycogen stores, we have various amounts of glycogen based on how much carbohydrate we're, we're consuming in our diet. So again, low carb being on the lowest end, and this is directly related to the time to exhaustion. So low carb diets lead to a small amount of muscle glycogen and a short time to exhaustion. So you get tired faster, basically. A normal diet, slightly more carbohydrates stored and a slightly uh, longer or maybe more, more than slightly longer, but a longer period before you get fatigued doing exercise. And then again, you wouldn't probably want to maintain this all the time, but a high carb diet that's going to lead to more muscle glycogen stores and much greater time to exhaustion. I'm only showing time to exhaustion here, but there are also some studies out there that show various other forms of exercise, including anaerobic exercise, are going to have worse performance um, on low carb diets than normal or potentially high carb diets. Um, so 
for these reasons, uh, it's probably not great to be on a high protein, low carb diet for exercise or athletic performance as well. In this video, we just went over some very basic information that everybody who is trying to do either weight maintenance or weight loss should be aware of both for exercise and diet tips. Um, I have other videos where I've already talked about what kind of uh, intake we should bring in for macronutrients and um, also some videos on how we can calculate your, your energy need in order to maintain weight, which if you eat less, you end up losing weight. So I'll put links to those in the description below this video.